My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer America. I've been with my friends, just trying to make a little money. My job is not just to entertain, but to explain how days like today can happen. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Like I've been thinking, maybe what happened here is we did such a good job saving the economy that it just can't be derailed by a few measly large rate hikes. I mean, that is the reason why the market got slammed again today. Dow plunging 351 points. Thank heavens it was bet- really it was much lower at one point. The S&P plummeting 1.44%, but the Nasdaq nosediving 2%. Worst two-day decline in more than a month. We have simply had too much of a good thing. And a lot of those good things come about because we bounced back so quickly and strongly from the pandemic. And that momentum is proving very hard to break. It's almost like we forgot there was a pandemic. It is difficult to remember what it was like in the spring of 2020 at the height of the pandemic. I can't blame anyone for wanting to block out that whole episode. We lost one million people to a virus we never heard of a few months before. But j Powell knew how bad it was. When things started getting really scary, March 3rd, he slashed the federal funds rate by 50 basis points to a range of 1% to 1.25%. Then 13 days later, he in 13 days, he cut another 100 basis points, talking, taking us down to the 0 to 0.25% range. Yet things just kept getting worse and worse. They say a picture is worth 1,000 words. So why don't we do this? If you want a picture that captures the COVID crash, I'm going to put one up. Look at the stock of Carnival, the cruise company. We started freaking out about people getting sick on these ships, so people stopped booking on them. And then the government ordered the ships grounded. Suddenly, these heavily indebted behemoths with tens of thousands of employees were teetering. Look at this decline. That's 54. All the way down here, you're talking about nine. Yeah, that's right. And this is just a single-digit midget right here. It showed no real sign of bottom either because there was a genuine fear, and actually logical fear, that this thing was going to go under. It actually made sense that, that if it did, then on March 23rd, something happened. j Powell, Fed chief, pulled out all the stops. He issues a press release, which sure seems mild-mannered, not unlike him. Quote, Federal Reserve announces extensive new measures to support the economy, end quote. Oh, but it was the furthest thing from being mild. Powell basically declared war against bankruptcy in any form. Remember, we were looking at double-digit unemployment back then. So he wanted to cushion the blow by preventing layoffs, particularly to public companies. The easiest way to do that is for the Fed to make it so it's incredibly easy for businesses to borrow money. Remember, that became the problem. Listen to this. After that, there were a slew of different facilities that he put into place. A lot of them look like what should have been done and wasn't done until the end of the financial crisis. Done too late to prevent a lost decade for the economy. Powell had read about the Great Depression. was a great student of He lived through the Great Recession. He didn't want to preside over some great pandemic cataclysm. He saw mass layoffs on the horizon, so he quickly moved to staunch the bleeding. Yes, that's terrific. We forget that. It drives me crazy that we forget that. Powell solved the mass unemployment problem, but he, and a much more profitable Congress than he thought, created a new problem, the inflation problem that we're now dealing with. Witness the ground zero of the pandemic, Carnival, let's go back to that, which suspended business on its Princess Cruise Lines on March 13th, was suddenly able to sell, because of that statement I read you from, nearly 72 million shares at eight bucks, and just weeks later, while also issuing $1.95 billion worth of 5.75% convertible senior notes and $4 billion uh, worth of 11.5% senior notes. Carnival never would have been able to raise that money without Jay Powell and his Fed backstop. It saved this company from going under. The company would have definitely filed for bankruptcy. And you know what would have happened? How about this? 120,000 jobs saved by Powell like anybody cares now. And that's just one example. You make the same point about the whole cruise industry. At the exact same time, Congress gave the airlines $54 billion in relief to keep them from going under. The situation remained dire until the end of April when Boeing, another teetering enterprise, came to market with a monster $25 billion bond offering no government assistance needed, a sign that capital markets were finally thawed and business could continue despite the pandemic. 
Of course, back then, we had no idea how long the COVID economy would last. I mean, come on, we didn't, we didn't know. Who would have known Moderna? Who the heck was Moderna? I was the only guy I ever had him on TV before. Hey, Pfizer, okay. Well, there, Pfizer was not known as being a breakthrough drug company. Who would have thought that they would have had the vaccines before the end of the year? I've gone back and looked at hundreds of articles about the virus from that period, and I couldn't find one story arguing that we could get a vaccine faster than four or five years. I mean, I had the mumps. I mean, oh, it doesn't even sound like a disease anymore. But it took them five years to develop a mumps vaccine. And this thing was killing people left and right. Defense liquidity injections seem minuscule versus the scale of the threat. And I'm not even talking about all the stimulus checks or the moratorium on evictions or the child tax credits or the suspension of student loan payments. The result, we beat the pandemic so quickly that the checks were still in the mail when the world started going back to normal and cash balances went sky high. Now we're paying the price for all of that largesse, but I would tend to think it's more of all that oxygen because the economy came back too quickly and now we've got inflation all over the place. The Federal Reserve is frantically trying to stabilize the situation. They want to tamp down on wage inflation because wage inflation is systemic. But business is so darn healthy, nothing they do seems to matter. After so many rate hikes, you'd think that we'd be flooded with bankruptcies and layoffs. That's what they thought. No, and I'm going to give you a staggering statistic that you've not heard from. One that is just going to blow your mind that people should be talking about. Bankruptcies. Bankruptcies, both public and private, are pacing at the lowest level right now. After all these rate hikes, the lowest level since 2010, according to S&P Global. Lowest since 2010. Almost no one's going bankrupt, which means not enough layoffs to cool down the overheated job market. Amazingly, only two companies that have more than a billion dollars in liabilities and, and were publicly traded have filed for bankruptcy in 2022 with more than one billion in liabilities. Revlon and GWG Holdings, hardly major employers, two that you're really not focused on. All these rate hikes have yet to cause mass firings, and mass filings. And that's just not going to cool the economy. It is true that equity markets are pretty much frozen, right? Hardly any companies have been able to raise money right here. Why? Well, I mean, there, there's just not enough money around. The stock market's scared to death, just like what we had today. That's what's happening. Yet even the most marginal, newly public enterprises just keep chugging along. You think some of these SPAC names will run out of money soon, right? I mean, come on, so many of them are horrendous, but they haven't run out of money. Can you imagine? Until Sam Bankman-Fried came along with his FTX crypto collapse, there were only a handful of sizable private bankruptcies, and they were all absorbed very quickly. How could this be? Simple. The government did too good a job bailing us out during the worst period of the pandemic, and CEOs have cleverly managed to beat back bankruptcy as things have become more difficult. If there were ever a candidate to go bankrupt in a pandemic, it would be the movie theater chase. But Adam Aaron, the redoubtable CEO of AMC, managed to raise money by summoning a full planet of apes eager to bid the stock up in a buying frenzy. That's how a company with $10 billion in debt and lease liabilities can stay alive in an industry that should never have been able to survive a pandemic. And by the way, anyone who bought the stock above seven has been crushed. But the institution's been preserved. And it should have been torn asunder. All that said, I'm sure there'll be many layoffs after Christmas. I don't want to finger point the retailers who've been uh, most likely to be thrown into bankruptcy when the holidays are over. But I do want people to realize that, in a way, our current high inflation economy is the high, quali the high quality problem left over from what had to happen. Our leaders did a great job of saving struggling businesses. If anything, they did their job too well. Let me ask you, though. Would it have been better if they saved these companies or let them all go? We had a low inflation recovery after the Great Recession. I'm liking this high inflation recovery from COVID a lot better. Here's the bottom line. Hindsight is 2020, but Jay Powell was dealing with the unknown back then, and he did it with gusto. The result, the lowest unemployment rate in decades paired with the highest inflation rate in decades. You win some, you lose some. Gene in California. Gene. Hi, Jim. <clears throat> thank you Hi, for Jean. taking my call and for all the advice you've offered over the years. I'm a oh, thank long, you. long time fan. Um, I was calling thank today you. about eBay. I, um, in uh, taking some of your advice, decided to go through all the uh, stocks in my portfolio, looking at the fundamentals, and was surprised at their um, earnings loss. I, um, I've held it for a long time through the uh, PayPal right. 
spinoff. It's and, a, you um, know, I've got to tell you, Gene, it's a faltering business. I mean, it's a good one. I was on the site the other day. Counting, by the way, crypto mining devices. Seeing who's selling those. And you know what? It's so-so. It looks very It looks very 2009, the site. Or maybe 1999. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing, frankly. I like Etsy much better. Jay Powell was dealing with the unknown at the height of the pandemic. And you know what? He did a great job with Gusto. The result, we got the lowest unemployment rate in decades, but it's paired with the highest inflation rate in decades. You know what? It could be a lot worse. On Mad Tonight, there was a one-two punch out in the REIT space last week that had investors worried. So what should you make of the cohort now? And is there still opportunity to be had? I'm going to take a close look. Then with the major averages falling today, should we be worried about this tape as we exit bear market rally mode? I'm not sure, but I'm going to go up the charts to find out. And you know what? Someone called about super microcomputing after the light, and during the light around. Oh, man, what a monster. I'm going to turn to my homework. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.